Now we have what? Okay. Can everybody see the full screen? Whoops, as I go through. There we go. Um, it looks like it's showing your notes as well as your next slide. It's not a big deal, but um No, I, I would like to change. Okay, I wonder. It's because all right, so I bet you I have to switch my screen up here. Let me try this again. There we go. Perfect. Good. Okay. Yes, I had to switch my monitors. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to um, um, share our welcome note for this morning. So, uh, please be aware that we'll be recording today's events. The recording will be available at chestermere.ca Seniors Week for viewing at a later date. Good morning to you all and welcome to Day 4 of Seniors Week. My name is Sharon Matterman and I am the Seniors and Community Development Facilitator for the City of Chestermere. Welcome to today's uh, Seniors Teleconference as part of our Seniors Week activities. We are delighted that you're able to join us. Our guest speaker today is Leslie Brackman, manager of the Deaf and Hear Alberta. Leslie will be talking about their Step Ahead program and their goal to combat social isolation in seniors who are hard of hearing. Good morning to you, Leslie, and a very warm welcome. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you all today on this very, very cold June day. Um, it's such a nice week uh, to be able to celebrate seniors, and I appreciate you inviting me to this so that I, I can, you know, talk a little bit about Deaf and Hear Alberta and our Step Ahead program and some of the other programs and services that we provide. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, I have actually been working for Deaf and Hear Alberta for 20 of its 60 years that we've been around. Uh, prior to that, uh, and that was in finance department, uh, so all kind of the accounting and the bookkeeping. Um, prior to that, I was also a volunteer as well as a contract uh, American Sign Language interpreter. And so now uh, I am managing this brand new program called Step Ahead. And with this uh, new program comes kind of a new learning for me uh, as I've never really done a presentation before. So you are my first and I appreciate you bearing with, bearing with me while I muddle through and learn this whole new skill set for myself. All right. Oops. And as I'm trying to press my key to make it go forward and it's not, so I'll do it the other way. Ah, there we go. Very good. So as a registered charity for 60 years, uh, Deaf, and Heard of, uh, Deaf and Hear Alberta, we've gone by a few names in the past. We have gone by Deaf and uh, Hard of Hearing Services, Deaf and, Deaf and Hard of Hearing Society, uh, and now we are Deaf and Hear Alberta. And we have been providing service to Deaf and Hard of Hearing individuals throughout Alberta uh, for 60 years. We're celebrating our 60th this year, which is quite exciting for us. And over the years, we have had to modify our services based on the needs and the changing needs of the communities we serve as well as Albertans. We offer uh, information and support on hearing issues as well as a peer mentoring program. And this program is there to help support people who are uh, someone maybe struggling with their hearing loss and has a new journey on how to obtain hearing aids and go through the process of having a hearing test done. We also have um, an e-store, um, so an online store as well as some products here in the office. And these are assistive technology devices. Uh, so phones with amplification, uh, pocket talkers are little communication devices, as well as some home safety alerting devices. So 
things like a fire alarm, um, a carbon monoxide detector uh, for somebody who is hard of hearing or deaf aren't able to know that that alarm has been triggered. Uh, so we have alerting devices such as strobe lights or um, things that would uh, flashlight, say, in your living room, those kinds of devices. We also have those for sale and demonstration here at the office. We also provide workplace assessments um, and tools to assist those who need accommodation and special circumstances within their business. Uh, we can provide uh, we can provide employers with training and education on everything from how to manage meetings together in the office, um, how to make meetings accessible, ways to communicate with your employees, and any kind of accommodation, such as specialized phones um, and communication type equipment so that they can function well within that business area. We also offer sign language classes. Uh, all along, we have had them as in-person classes um, throughout the year and a full-on immersion uh, type situation as well during the summer months. Uh, COVID has changed it so that we now have online. We provide online American Sign Language courses. We hope to once again, maybe in the fall, we'll see uh, how things progress be able to offer those in person again at our office. And then, of course, our newest program called the Step Ahead Program for Isolated Seniors. So funded through the Calgary Seniors Resource Society, we built the Step Ahead Program. And this is to combat social isolation and loneliness among seniors in Calgary, Alberta, and the surrounding areas, including Chestermere. There has been an awful lot of research done, as you've probably heard some things uh, this week and with your movie presentation last night. Um, the effects of social isolation uh, are just, it can cause so many different things for seniors. And the, the social isolation that's happened the past 15 months because of COVID, of course, has made everything that much worse. And humans need that those connections. We need those connections for our well-being. We're built for com companionship, we're built for communication and conversation. Uh, pandemic making everything that much worse. And of course, with, with um, the social isolation, it puts seniors at a greater risk for negative health effects uh, and a reduced quality of life. And for deaf and hard of hearing seniors, the risk can be that much greater because those conversations were a little more difficult in the first place and have are often quite frustrating. And a lot of hard of hearing and deaf seniors will just, it will result in just giving up and getting tired of it and giving up, which is that much worse for them being isolated. It just makes everything that much more difficult for them. And so that's where our Step Ahead program comes in. And our goal is to diminish social isolation with deaf and hard of hearing seniors and other seniors as well. We don't have to specifically focus on deaf or hard of hearing because there's lots of other isolated seniors who need our assistance as well. DHA has, uh, and I'll refer to it as DHA sometimes, it'll slip out, but it's deaf in here, Alberta. And sometimes we go by DHA. We have a lending library of tablets and assistive devices for learning and discovery. And our seniors can use these for short or long-term uh, basis, depending on what their needs are. And we are lucky enough to have a very good um, partnership with London Drugs. They have a volunteer program for seniors as well. And we have partnered with them. They uh, assist us with any of the issues with technology. They help us purchase that technology for our program. And anything that comes up where we need a little assistance to even continue with our program, uh, troubleshoot, they are there to help us with that. Um, as well as if through the program, um, some of our seniors feel like they would like to purchase technology for their own use. Um, London Drugs are happy to assist with that, prog with that process as well. 
And our screened and trained volunteers, they are screened and I train and talk to every single one of them. Um, they are familiar with different technology that we use. Um, they are familiar with uh, tablets, with Android, with iPads, all of those sorts of things. Um, and they are there to work with seniors uh, to help them through that process of learning some pieces of technology. But it's not only about the technology because there will be lots of people out there who want nothing to do with that. And they may just want a volunteer for tea, have a conversation over a cup of tea or go for a walk in the park or just do a jigsaw puzzle together. And then the volunteers are perfectly happy to do that kind of thing as well. And I do love this, this picture um, because I often have that look on my face when I'm looking at my any of my pieces of technology. Uh, and I have two teenagers that are very willing to tell me what to do when I have that look on my face. And uh, so, of course, the technology is our world right now. And it, it is confusing. And it is, it, it is a little, um, you can be fearful from it. It is a little frightening. And there are so many apps out there that we use now for socialization, such as Facebook and Zoom. We have our meetings on Zoom. We have family chats on Facebook. Even counseling sessions are done through Facebook and Zoom now. But there are also lots of apps out there that are for just pure enjoyment, for games. I've even seen uh, museum tours that you can do online through, through an iPad. There's uh, apps that are helpful for memory. Um, there are calendars, photos. There's so many things that are involved with a tablet that a lot of people just don't know are out there. And our volunteers are there to be able to help support that process and give ideas of what's there. Even things such as um, attending uh, a religious service is very important for a person's well-being. And those options are out there as well. And thankfully, things are slowly returning to normal, as we'll maybe find out on the news today, um, and where we are able to visit one-on-one -on -one and our volunteers are able to meet with seniors. And our volunteers can meet in anywhere, uh, obviously when somebody is comfortable to do so and when we're allowed to go into homes and have that. Uh, volunteers can go straight to a senior's home, restaurants, cafes, um, internet, Starbucks has free Wi-Fi, all of those sorts of things. Libraries, parks, even our Deaf and Hear Alberta building. Uh, people can come here and use our, use our services, use our technology to get used to that, even a visit. Um, a retirement and nursing homes as well when we're allowed to go into there. There's, I know of um, a senior in a, in a retirement home who has an iPad and would like to communicate with her family outside of that. And we're just waiting to go in and be able to provide that support so she can do so. And we had uh, so many volunteers I've had come forward that are very enthusiastic and wanting to be part of this program. And so many different skills, so many different uh, backgrounds where they work, their life experience, the countries they've come from, and uh, different work skills, different computer skills, all of those things, they have all come forward wanting to be part of this program. Uh, we can even match volunteers based on hobbies, which is also another really important, enjoyable piece of somebody's life. And as I had mentioned before, um, the technology, they can use it for a short time. If they're tired of it, they can move on to something else, even just a visit. Or if somebody wants to use it, our technology for um, a few months, then they can take that iPad and keep it with them and use it um, and use it to visit that way as well. We were also lucky enough um, that TELUS has a program and they've been able to provide us with uh, some tablets um, through their uh, low income um, program that they have. And these tablets come with their uh, unlimited data uh, because I know that's a problem too with lower income groups is that they can't, they might have a tablet, but they don't have the Wi-Fi and they can't afford to purchase that Wi-Fi to be able to use. 
and uh, TELUS has provided us with um, a, a whole variety of these different tablets that come with data for seniors to be able to use. As well as our lending library for volunteers, uh, they will go, they will have these available so that when they're visiting with a senior in their home and maybe they notice that um, there, you know, aren't these safety devices and how is the senior going to hear when their smoke alarm goes off? Um, so they're able to bring these pieces of technology with them and kind of demonstrate, you know, this is available out there for your safety um, and it, it just gives kind of that little extra piece that they might need in order to just enhance their lives. We also have alarm clocks that have a louder volume, a flashing light, even ones that vibrate uh, to wake people up. And uh, those, well, they can use, be used with teenagers as well if they have a hard time getting out of bed, like mine who would maybe benefit from that. Uh, there are amplified phones. So these are phones that even have like larger numbers, uh, larger, uh, um, heavier pieces, easier pieces for dexterity to use, uh, phones with a larger, louder volume on there and a whole variety of different ones. And uh, there's lots of people out there that don't even know that that exists. And that is another piece that can really enhance someone's life. And this is a very important piece of technology. Um, it's called a pocket talker. And this can be used for people with or without hearing aids. And it's a personal communication uh, device um, that can be used with normal one-on-one -on -one conversations or with a group of people. Or if you go into um, a restaurant or a pharmacy and you just be able, need to be able to hear that conversation better. This is a microphone that attaches to a headphone or can connect directly to someone's hearing aid. And it's uh, a device that just amplifies that communication just to make that conversation that much easier for people. And some of our successes so far, I'd like to tell you a few of those stories. Um, this is a really nice uh, picture that was drawn by one of our deaf seniors. Um, and this is for our 60th anniversary. So we are going to actually frame this and have it in our office. Um, she's a lovely senior who has been isolated in her um, senior's residence and uh, not, and being deaf, she's the only deaf one in that building. And so people try to communicate and you know maybe write notes and that, but for her, it was really important to have somebody uh, come and visit with her that can speak to her in a, her own language. So I had, I have a, several volunteers who sign American Sign Language and they meet with her for walks in the park. Um, as simple as that, something that can be, that we are allowed to do during COVID, go for a walk outside with somebody. Uh, and interestingly enough, her volunteer, it actually owns an art gallery in, um, in Black Diamond. So she loves to draw and paint and matched her with somebody with who has an art gallery. So it was a really nice connection between those two. As well as I had another senior uh, who had a cochlear implant. It's a little device that they have to enable hearing. And he hadn't spoken to his four sisters who live, one was in Morocco, one is in Switzerland, one is in Virginia, and another one is in England. And uh, he hadn't been able to see them for two years. So a volunteer uh, was able to go and visit with him and showed him how he had his own iPad. So she showed him how to set up FaceTime, showed him how to set up Zoom. And he was actually able to meet with his sisters after two years. It was really quite nice to hear his stories and how happy he was to be able to talk with his sisters again that he hasn't seen, especially during COVID, where they weren't allowed to fly anywhere and visit. As well as I had another, um, another senior who was able to um, learn how to use Zoom that she could attend her counseling sessions. Um, so all these different pieces are so important for a person for their well-being and for their health, the health of their body, the health of their mind. And that is the goal of our program. That is what we really, really like to do. 
And this is a group of our deaf seniors. Um, last summer, we were able to meet distance like we were allowed to do uh, outside. This is the green space that's across from our building. And we were able to invite all the deaf seniors over and have a lunch and have a nice little chat and a visit together. Um, because of course, the deaf seniors are going to be even more isolated um, just because of maybe where they live. They're the only ones there. Um, maybe their neighbors are a little hesitant, don't know how to talk to the seniors, are nervous about doing that. How do I communicate with a deaf person? Um, which further isolates them. So these kinds of meetings with our seniors are very, very important. And hopefully when we're allowed to have more than 20 people outside, we're going to do this again. So we're hoping in uh, maybe July, August, we can invite um, our group of deaf seniors back over uh, to the office again, and we can have a nice visit. And of course, we're just getting started. Um, COVID had put us behind quite a bit. Uh, the program was launched back in October, but then we would have, uh, we have a lockdown, we'd have another lockdown, and it made things quite a bit diff difficult for us to go out and, and do these kinds of things. But now things are starting to open up. People are, are more comfortable, uh, more, and more and more people are having their vaccinations. I've had both of mine, so I'm able, I feel a lot more comfortable being able to have people come back to the office and meet with me and uh, set up meetings with other people. So it's, it's feeling very good again. I'm very happy again to be able to offer that. And these are, what do I need anybody to do? Do you know a neighbor? Do you, is there a neighbor you haven't seen in a while that you think maybe could benefit from our program? Um, any friends, relatives, friends of friends, anybody you know who could use any of our programs and services here at Deaf and Hear Alberta, including Step Ahead, um, then please do con connect with us, contact us. All of our information is on our website or here as well. Um, online, there is also uh, a senior referral form and volunteer forms as well, if you know anybody who would like to volunteer with us. And that is the end of my presentation. And I am here to answer any questions. And if I don't know the answer, then I'll gladly reach out uh, to our staff here and be able to come up with some answers for you. Hi, Leslie. That was very much an informative session. Um, I did not know about the program that you're actually offering. So this is fantastic to, um, you know, let us all know what is going on. Um, I do have a couple of questions about your volunteer process. So if somebody would like to be a volunteer, what does that process entail? And could you explain a little more, please? Absolutely. Um, so for our volunteers, um, they would go on the volunteer um, uh, Calgary website, Propellus, uh, or a lot of people will come to us directly because they've always had an interest in uh, working with deaf people, working with hard of hearing people. And from that, uh, they would contact me. I have an application form. And with that application form from then, I will meet uh, and have an interview with every volunteer online. And so I have uh, quite a few questions where I find out about their interests, their backgrounds, uh, even their languages, uh, because I will have a lot of seniors whose first language um, isn't English. Uh, so then I have volunteers who have a myriad of different languages that they can speak. So that's another important piece. I'll learn about their hobbies. Um, and then uh, from there, there are police record checks that we do just to make sure that they um, their backgrounds are clear and it's somebody that we can safely have volunteer out there with seniors. And um, uh, reference checks, I will call. Usually I ask for a reference check and I'll call just to find out what it's like to work with them. Are there somebody that's reliable? Um, that kind of thing. I can usually... Uh, know quite a bit about uh, a volunteer when they call me and I have a good, you know, 45 minute to an hour conversation and interview with them. I usually find out a lot about somebody. Thank you. 
Uh, and with sort of regard to the police checks for volunteers, they're still free, correct? So, it, you know, it's not going to cost anything for a potential volunteer. Um, they are not free, but we cover the cost um, because our whole program is is funded through the Calgary Seniors Res Resource Society and Igniting Neighbors. Um, and uh, so it's 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 a pretty it's a pretty low cost for for the volunteers because the Calgary police really do like to make sure that volunteers isn't a high price and that that we do things like this. It's very important to vet and make sure our volunteers are safe to go out and visit with seniors. Uh, so, but we cover the cost. Uh, so if um, uh, if a volunteer goes to say a police unit on their own and has their police check done there in person. Um, they submit that to me and then I will reimburse that. We don't want the volunteers to have to have any cost for this whatsoever uh, as far as the police checks go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we have actually have a question in the chat. Um, about 10 years ago, I attended a speech reading course. It was held at Chestermere Library and ran for six weeks. I think it was so helpful. I, sorry, it was so helpful. I had recently lost hearing at the time. Are you doing any more of these? Ah, yes, we right now we haven't been able to secure um, an instructor. Uh, we're hoping that we 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 have. Let me back up. We had an instructor and he was he was very good and we were doing all of those classes online and they worked pretty good through COVID doing them online. Um, that man uh, had some uh, deaths in his family, so has had to move back over to England. And uh, we're hoping to be able to set it up so he can continue with that virtually. Uh, so now we're just kind of waiting for that process to happen and hopefully be able to begin that again. Because I know those are very valued classes and very helpful. Um, so do please keep in touch with us and keep asking that question to see if we're, we are starting those again. Um, the lady that manages those programs, her name is Sharon Nixon, and her information is on our website as well. Um, and I can put that into the chat or you can send me a message and I can do that. Should I put that? Okay. Yes, please. That'd be great. Okay. And this, oh, did it work? There it is. Yeah. There is Sharon's Great. email address uh, to contact about those uh, speech reading classes to when they will be starting again. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, just one more question from from me. So, how many uh, iPads have, have you actually given out to date? How many iPads have you actually given out to date? Oh, okay. Um, we have used. Uh, like of the iPads or the ones that Telus gave us? Yeah, those. Okay, the ones yeah. that Telus gave us. Uh, two. I have two out. I have five more that we can use, and I do have access to a few more as well. That's and so wonderful. that's a whole, and that's a whole different learning thing as well because the tablets are an Android, and our iPads, of course, are Apple. So. Um, that is another layer of, of working with the volunteers is there is a little extra training um, of do you use the Android or do you use the iPad? Because, um, of course, you know, it couldn't be easy. They couldn't be the same. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, gosh, yeah. Okay, any folks who are on the uh, participating in this call, do you have any questions that you would like to ask? Um, Marilyn? Uh, sorry. Marianne. It's yeah, Marianne. Marianne, Marianne. I'm yeah. sorry. So, so these pocket talkers, um, you'd be able to demonstrate how they work. Um, there is it. Yes, uh, they can be demonstrated. Um, they can be just demonstrated in several different ways. Uh, if somebody wanted to contact our equipment department directly, uh, and they can talk to them about how that pocket talker works. Uh, they can even come in and test it and try it. Uh, out to just to, you know, make sure it's something that that you can use that it's work and it, it's effective with you. There's three different kinds, I believe, of pocket talkers. So there's not just one. 
Um, and so it can be done and tested that way, or as uh, somebody who is part of the program, if it's a senior who has a volunteer visiting with them, then it can be demonstrated at that time as well. So it can, it can go either way. Um, okay, so what do you do, like call the office and, and try and organize that? Absolutely. With the COVID, how does that work still? Um, we are, and I'm trying to think, I know Kathy is the one, I'll put it even in Kathy's email here. Okay, so I know during COVID when there was a greater lockdown, um, somebody was able to uh, call and talk with Kathy and they were able to come and pick up a device and bring it home with them and test it out. And then if it, it worked for them and it's something they wanted, they would return that training device and they would order their own, a brand new one for them to use. Um, the pieces like the headphones could never be returned because, of course, for sanitary reasons, we'd want to make sure that that uh, wasn't something that was kind of returned and used again. Um, although there are these little covers that can be put over the actual hearing part, the foam part that can actually be removed uh, just to make sure that um, everything's clean for everyone. And that device, once it was brought back, was also, of course, sanitized and clean for the next person to use it. Uh, so it kind of worked that way. Uh, when we are fully open again, um, then appointments are made and people can come and sit in our office and they can practice and use our phones to see if they work, the pocket talkers, all of the different devices. Right. And Kathy is the uh, perfect person to talk to about that. She manages the e-store, uh, all of the equipment, the uh, testing equipment, um, the ones you can borrow to bring back home and, and practice and use to see if it fits. She is the one that manages all of those so she would be on your website, this person, Kathy. Absolutely. Okay, good. Thank you. Great. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any more questions? Okay. Actually, I've got a question. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Ryan. Yeah, thank you, Leslie, for the great presentation. Uh, my question is, you've mentioned to to refer uh you know people to to your office my challenge has been having that conversation um because a lot of times i feel that some seniors may not think they need uh the assistance or may feel awkward maybe even embarrassed um how, how do you go about having the conversation oh that's a tough one <laughs> Um, it is really, really difficult. A lot of people do feel awkward because they, they feel almost like a lesser person if they have a hearing loss. Yet, we don't feel the same when we have eyeglasses. It's the same thing. A hearing aid amplifies your hearing so that you can be part of those conversations. Your eyeglasses enable you to see. And yet, there's such a terrible stigma surrounding somebody with hearing loss. And we work very hard. We work on advocacy. We have blogs. We do presentations, trying to get it across that somebody who has hearing loss, losing their hearing, we just need, other people just need to have patience. They have to have patience and understanding. Now, that being said, trying to get someone to admit that they need that help is really hard. Um, my, my own father, going from experience for that, um, he just passed away, unfortunately, last September. Um, it took him, gosh, it was a couple of years on my mom getting very upset with him because the TV was too loud. <laughs> it took quite a while to convince him to get that. Um, yeah, now that's a good, how, it's almost like if, if you can, Talk, if there's somebody out there, like our peer support group, if our peer support, if they can meet with somebody there, they can even talk to them because they've been there, done that. They've had to accept that, okay, well, I guess I do need to go in and get my hearing test. Um, 
maybe somebody meeting with them who's been there, they've walked it, they, they've lived it, they know what it's like. Um, maybe uh, a little bit of, and some of it is even uh, the nervousness of what's going to happen at, at, at a, you know, at a hearing test, what, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What do I have to go through? We actually have videos that are available uh, on what that looks like um, so that they have that little piece with them when they're starting to maybe learn that they might need to do that. Um, it kind of brings that fear out if they are there um, and they could see what, what that process is like. Um, talking to somebody who's been there, I think is kind of the best the best beginning. Um, talking with a Sharon who is manages the speech reading classes. Uh, she is another good person to talk to about um, kind of those identifying pieces of when do I think I need a hearing aid? Um, can I, am I missing conversation? Are people muffled because they're mumbling or are people muffled because I just can't hear them as well as I used to? And she has a lot of information and ideas about um, how to talk to somebody about that. Uh, the way to talk to them about that to make them feel like maybe this will be a benefit to them and will help their everyday life. So Sharon is another really good person um, to start with as well. And she manages the peer program as uh, so she uh, is another good person to talk to about that. And she herself is hard of hearing. So she's been there, done that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all, all really good points. And I absolutely love the idea of, uh, you know, uh, having presentations to educate uh, everyone. And I love the analogy that it's just like, you know, wearing glasses and there's no mm -hmm. stigma attached to wearing glasses. So why is it to, you know, having uh, hearing aids or not? And yes, uh, Sharon, I think we should definitely bring uh, uh, Leslie and Tim back uh, for seniors, you know, on a piece you know, that talks about, you know, remove, uh, and that can help remove that stigma. I think it'd be very helpful. Please, anytime. That is one of the things that we do. We like to do that. It's so very, very important. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Good you. questions. Good questions. I'm just writing that one down, Councillor Ryan. <laughs> sure. So I'm just thinking from an agency perspective. So uh, although I work for the municipality of the city of Chestermere, <laughs> Our, our department is FTSS funded and so obviously we work very very closely with clients within the community in an outreach, outreach capacity and obviously within the office so as, a, um, as an agency can we make referrals to you or does the individual uh, need to come to you themselves? Oh referrals absolutely uh, we take referrals all the time and our, actually our peer program is funded by FCSS too. Um, <laughs> So, yes, absolutely. Refer away. Um, that's what we're here for. Okay. I also want to say that I have a hearing aid. And now Sorry, now. Sorry, now we can't hear you. Okay. Are you muted or are you on? No, we're Okay, can you hear me? A little yeah, bit. I'm very, very quiet. quiet. I have a hearing aid. I have a both, both hearing aid. Yeah. Um, I've been speaking out to people when I'm in stores and telling them I have a hearing aid to speak of. I, I find that people, you know, we as the elderly and who have hearing aids can advocate a lot for ourselves. You know, we, we, we have to tell people that we have them so that people can speak to us. Yes, I yes. I to that I am reluctant sometimes to talk to people. Yes. And also, I have become more isolated. I have lots of skills. I have worked all my life in volunteering and being around people. But I have drawn back mainly because of my hearing aid. Talking on the telephone, you know, it's very difficult. You can see on the telephone. Um, there's so many ways that you find Especially when you're elder, with your limitation, with your eyes, your hearing, you know, you don't move as quickly. So you're finding more and more you're drawing back. And hearing, especially, becomes very isolating, even on these Zoom calls, because everybody speaks differently. 
an accent from somebody really drives me crazy because I'm not really listening. When I'm done with a Zoom call, I'm exhausted, right? So all these things play play a part of this withdrawing, with, with taking, not going out as much. And this isolation especially is really, when I'm with someone, I can literally now I have a mask on. And all those things have really added to, in the last two years to to you know, keeping me away from people. And now all of us we are coming back into hearing that. But what we forget is not just our hearing. Our brain has slow has slown down to the answers. Right? It's not just what we hear. But the close that's up here. Yeah. And that has changed too. So now when we go out or when I go out in a group of people, I find that I must concentrate even more to hear people and to understand what they're saying. So we have we ourselves, as people with hearing problems have to advocate more and more in this society to help people understand that we can help them and try to keep people to yes, speak louder or uh, take time to hear us. Yes. And not only that, but I'm afraid very young people are having the same problem. It's not just us older men. Be aware of that too. A lot of young people are having the problem and they don't even realize it. Yes. Yeah. That will be the next group of people that comes to visit, visit us a lot. And as I'm driving around, people have their music on so loud and I almost feel like giving them my business card. I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs> yes, I know it's, and that's exactly it. That's, and, and you are so right in the fact that self, you have to, and it, it must be hard. It must be hard to be able to say, okay, I need you to say that again and again and again. I mean, even me who has very, very good hearing, I have trouble through those glass panels. I have a lot and I can hear very, very well and I get frustrated. So it just must be unimaginably frustrating for you. Now, if I want to volunteer someone already who has a hearing problem, I have a hearing problem. How do you um, instruct me or how do you, your program helps me to understand the person I'm going to visit and also the awareness that I too have a problem? That's the question I'd like to know. Is, is, so your question is like, if, if you would come and volunteer with me and you being hard of hearing yourself, how would I be able to give you training and how would I be able to interview to continue with my program? Yeah. That, you know what, and that is a perfect question. And thank you for that, because now that gives me a lot to think about. I have had one person who is around my age who is hard of hearing, and he and I have been communicating mainly through email. Our interview was online through Zoom. But somebody like you, if you wanted to volunteer, I would drive to you. I would drive to you and we could have a conversation and learn about the program together somewhere where we're face to face. That would be most important, I think, for you. Um, I think it would be far too frustrating for you and I to meet like this. Yes. So for absolutely. Sure. Yeah, and thank you for that because that actually gives me something to think about. I hadn't had that come up before. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Nell. And I would like to pick up one of your one of your other points about face masks. So right at the beginning of this pandemic, I actually heard that there was going to be pandemics would kind of, I suppose, see through around the mouth area. So people who were uh, had hearing uh, difficulties or, or lip read could actually, you know, uh, be connected, be included. 
and that wasn't actually happening and I've not seen any until that one you've just flashed up briefly Leslie I've not seen any so you know when we talk about connected being connected in isolation good grief without this kind of aid which you're wearing demonstrating so many people uh, you know have been feeling like Nell's been feeling yes Yes, and we have a lot of these here at the office too. So I would bring those one of those to you. <laughs> and I can mail out these if anybody would like some of these. Um, Sharon, do, would you like me to mail a few to your office? And then you know what, that'd be absolutely fantastic. So we're actually closed at the moment. When we open, if they, you know, if we still have to practice physical distancing and folks still have to wear masks, that would be wonderful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So I notice in the chat box, Claire, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to uh, thank you, Leslie. This has been very informative and timely. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering about hearing tests. Is there, what do you look thank for you. when you book a hearing test? Is, are they all or? As far as, um, as far as like, if you want to, you know, you need a hearing test, where do you go to? Because there's so many choices. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. There are lots that are covered by Alberta Health Services. Um, so they're free hearing tests. Your hearing test really shouldn't cost you anything. Um, and it's always good to go to a hearing aid provider. Like if it's something that's determined and you do need a hearing aid, um, then it's always good to find that provider who offers many different kinds. Because there's some providers out there, it's like they sell one kind and one kind only. But that might not meet your needs. You, um, places like, I believe, Herp Hearing, I'm not sure what they have out in Chestermere. Uh, but here, there's a whole variety of different places to go. Um, Sharon is a really good person, and her email is there. Um, she herself went to Harp Hearing Center, H A R P, Harp. Okay, thank you. She herself went there um, and she would actually be a really good person to talk about the different, the different buildings and locations. She might be able to find one for you that's closer to Chestermere. Um, so yeah, she's a really good person to talk to about that. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so any more questions? Okay, so thank you so very much, Leslie. That was so informative, and I'm so glad that you were able to highlight your program and that we were your guinea pigs, so to speak. That is just fantastic, but we really do look forward to having you back in the fall to talk about removing stigma around um, around this um, program. Yes. So. Um, so again, thank you very much. It's been a lovely to have you. And on behalf of the Senior Suite Committee in the City of Chestermere, again, thank you for supporting this event. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. I hope I did okay. Absolutely, you did. It was fantastic. So, oh gosh, yeah. No, we we would be very good at giving you feedback. So, <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you, everyone, and take care and enjoy the rest of your week. Good for everybody disappears. Don't go yet. At 2.15 this afternoon, come and learn to play a ukulele. If you have a ukulele and you're a beginner, we have the fantastic Mel Porter here who will be showing you how to do that. Please go on to chestermere.ca if you want to find out more information. And anybody on here fancy yourselves as an actor? If you want to be part of our fantastic, fun radio play, Life with Luigi, it's 6.30 p.m. Please, again, go on to chestermere.ca Seniors Week for more information. I actually did this play several months ago with other folks dotted around the province with uh, Steve Jeffries from the Anchor newspaper, his theatre group, and it was so much fun. We really had a blast. And just a reminder, tomorrow um, from 9 to 5, we have our virtual wellness fair covering everything from an old, sorry, old dude on a bike to crystals, to mood boards, to a Bangra key fit. We have something for everybody. So that's 9 till 5. If you want to go again, seniors, uh, just me, seniorsweek.ca, you'll find the information there. And we have an online scavenger hunt 
but it can be done in person, downloadable form, and it's just around the lake here, and there's a couple of great prizes up for grabs. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. This will actually be the last Seniors Telephone Conference now until September. I'm going to be taking just a tad of a break. So thank you very much for all of your support. It's been amazing to see you. If you've got any suggestions or ideas what you'd actually like to see for teleconference, please let me know. So thank you, everybody. Enjoy your day. Take care. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you.